Understanding the P-Value, a quiz to help develop your understanding. Hi, I'm Dr Nick from Creative Maths, including Statistics Learning Centre. This video builds on our very popular video, Understanding the P-Value, and other videos about P-Values. This video comprises a series of true-false questions to help you develop your understanding of the topic. For each question, there will be a statement. Pause the video and think, and if you are in a class or group, discuss your answer. Decide if the statement is true or false. Start the video again and check if you are correct. Listen to the explanation. Sometimes I may link to a video that helps with the answer. And here we go! Question 1. Use of p-value. The p-value is used mainly for t-tests for the value of a mean. True or false? Pause the video to think of your answer and to discuss it. False. A p-value is reported in t-tests but also in other places. Results from all hypothesis tests can be put in terms of a p-value. P-values are reported for analysis of variance, regression, chi-squared test, correlation, difference of proportions and many more statistical tests. Question 2. Calculation. P-values are generally calculated by computer packages and are difficult to calculate by hand. Pause the video to think of your answer, is this true or false, and discuss. True. It is not easy to calculate a p-value, which is why they were not widely used until we had computers. You would just about always use a computer to calculate a p-value. For further explanation, watch the video Understanding Where the P-Value Comes From. Question 3. Role. The p-value tells us how much evidence we have to reject the null hypothesis. True. A small p-value indicates that we are unlikely to have achieved this result if the null hypothesis were true. Thus, the less likely it is, the smaller the p-value, the more evidence we have that the null hypothesis should be rejected. Remember, p is low, null must go. Question 4. Sample or population? A p-value can be used to evaluate population data and samples. True or false? False. If we have data on the whole population of interest, we do not need to perform inference. A p-value is needed when inferring if a result we find in a sample reflects an effect in the population from which the sample is drawn. Question 5. Strength. The smaller the p-value, the stronger the effect or relationship is. False. The smaller the p-value, the stronger is the evidence against the null hypothesis. A small p-value means it is really unlikely to get this result if the null hypothesis were true. The effect could still be weak, but because the sample is large, there is a strong evidence that the effect we see in the sample, such as being different from the mean in the null hypothesis, exists in the population. Question 6. Significance level. If we use a significance level of 0 0.05, then we will reject the null hypothesis about 5% of the time. False. How often we will reject the null hypothesis depends on the data. The significance level gives us the probability of a type 1 error, which is that we will reject the null hypothesis when we shouldn't. For more on types of errors, see type 1 and type 2 errors. Question 7. Sample size. The size of the sample affects the p-value. True. With a large sample, a small effect can produce a significant result. With a small sample, the same size effect would have a larger p-value. Question 8. Consistent results. Two students each took a random sample of advertisements for used cars to explore the relationship between price and the distance travelled. Both students got significant results, but the p-values were different between the samples. This is to be expected. True. Just as one sample will differ from another due to sampling variation, so will the p-values that are calculated from the samples differ from each other. It would be surprising if one sample found a significant result and the other one had a result that was not significant. But if the p-values are near the significance level, this could happen. Question 9. Significance. 
the value of the p-value does not tell us whether our result is statistically significant. False. A result is called statistically significant if the null hypothesis is rejected, which occurs when the p-value is less than the significance level. It indicates that there is evidence that the effect exists in the population. Thus, a small p-value is associated with a statistically significant result. Question 10. Zero p-value. Sometimes a computer output will give the p-value as 0 0.000. This means that the computer has made an error. And this is false. A p-value of 0 0.000 indicates that there is very little to no chance of getting this result if the null hypothesis were true. A p-value of 0 0.000 is often a happy thing for researchers hoping for evidence of effect. So, how did you do? I hope you paused and thought about the answers as we went along. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Look in the description for links to all my videos about p-values. This video was brought to you by Dr Nick at Creative Maths. Please like this video, subscribe, but most of all join the channel, especially if you are using our videos in your teaching. Help the channel grow and help me help more and more people like you. I am truly grateful for my channel members who help make these videos possible.